Hello everyone, my name is Charles Monroe and I'm a student at Spring Armor University and I'm going to be talking today about loving your enemies and all the things that Jesus had to say about that. The passage is only about five verses long and it's in the fifth chapter of Matthew and it comes in the end of a long series of things that Jesus lays out and how we relate to people. Everything from murder to adultery to oaths and everything in between. And the Sermon on the Mount is a three chapter long section that really just discusses the essence of Christian living. It's a reason why it's the most famous sermon that Jesus gave. And it's amazing to me that loving your enemies is only a five verse portion of the entire section. And I think to understand the power of those five verses, you really have to understand the context behind it. So Jesus said to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You have to understand that he was talking to a crowd that knew suffering very deeply. At this time, Israel was not its own country. Roman, the Roman government had subjugated it a long time before. And when Rome subjugated a country, it was never pretty. It was more unlikely that these people in the crowd know, had, no, had family members who had died and been killed in battle. And more unlikely, they knew people who related to people that had been raped or sexually molested by the Romans. Because Israel was not necessarily high on the Romans' priority list. In fact, the people that they sent, the soldiers that they sent to Israel, were people that they wanted to get out of Rome. It was almost a death sentence to a lot of Roman soldiers who went there. They were either criminals or very highly irregular in their attitudes and what they did. And so, more than likely, the Jews faced a whole lot of persecution and suffering out of these people. Unscrupulous men. And so in this crowd that Jesus talks to, you have this automatic hatred for the Romans. Not only that, but tax collectors at this time were Jews that went over and helped the Romans collect taxes from their fellow Jews, which made them even more hated. They were spies beyond all belief. And I think most of us probably don't even understand that type of suffering. Most of us have not experienced our country being subjugated by a tyrannical force. Yet the Jews were living in this suffering. And yet Jesus doesn't even flinch. He goes straight ahead and says, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Saying to treat the Romans as if they were equals. To love them as if they were your family and friend. And then not only that, but to pray for them, to go before Almighty God and mention them in your prayers. It's something that was unheard of. Now that the context is set, we have to ask ourselves, is this even possible? Is it even possible to love, legitimately love people that have treated us so badly? I think it is important to note that this type of love, I don't necessarily believe, is one that we emotionally will feel. It is a lot of times the things we do in Christianity are things that we that don't feel good. Suffering and trials probably innately do not feel good. As well, loving your enemies is not something that you're probably going to enjoy. That doesn't seem to be the point. I don't think Jesus is concerned about the seeming impossibility of this. Well, the Bible shows many instances where it happened. For example, Stephen, when he was stoned, prayed that God would not hold this, these things against the people who were killing him. Paul prayed for the Jews that persecuted him unceasingly. And Jesus asked that God forgive the people who killed them, but they didn't know what they did. They didn't know what they had done. And so I doubt in those moments, I doubt in the moment that Stephen was being stoned, he felt necessarily empathetic or a well of emotions for people. Maybe he did, and he's a lot stronger of an individual than I am. But regardless, we are called to love those who don't give us anything in return. And Jesus ends this whole section with the phrase, be perfect therefore as your heavenly Father is perfect. As if saying that in all things, if anything to strive to be without error in, is loving your enemies. The phrase, I am not perfect, does not seem to hold much water in this instance, since Jesus really encapsulates this idea with, of all things to be perfect. I think it's good to mention that loving your enemies does not necessarily mean that you're going to win them or win friends by doing so. There is no promise of success when it comes to loving the people around you who are hard to love. In essence, 
The command to love your enemies is not something that we emotionally are going to feel. Because honestly, it's probably not going to work a lot of the times. The command to love your enemy is probably a command and a call to suffering. Because it is not going to be easy sometimes. It's, it's hard. We're going to suffer in the process. But as Christians, we have to be okay with that. We have to be okay with rejection. People not understanding what we're doing. And Jesus suffered most of his existence on earth, at least in most of his ministry. People didn't understand him. People didn't want to, people wanted to kill him. Because he showed love for the least of these. And that is the call that we have. And that, I think, is the big, potent message behind loving your enemies. Or many, many scholars and many commentators will say that loving our enemies is one of the biggest distinctions in Christianity. Thank you for your time.